Hey, MTS crew. How are you doing today? I hope your day is going fine, and I pray that sickness stayed away from your home. Me and Sister Pam, uh, we're yeah. glad to that y'all tune in, and today we have a treat for you. We're going to do banana pudding. They call it my famous banana pudding, but you it know, is. Uh, everybody likes it. So yes. we're going to do a uh, banana pudding today. So we're going to pray before we get started with this banana pudding, mm -hmm. and we're going to thank God for providing for us. All right, God, we just thank you, God. We praise you yes. for providing uh, items to make this banana pudding. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Yes. You know, we have to thank God even for the small things. And God, we yes. thank you and we praise you. God, we thank you for our MTS crew. Thank we you. pray that yes. sickness stayed away from their home and that their families are doing fine. God, we thank you and we praise you and we give you and you only all the praises and all the thanks. Yes. Okay, I hope y'all are doing good today. We're going to do my version of my banana pudding. Yes. My mother made this banana pudding, but y'all, I have a little earache. My mom made this banana pudding, so this is um, um, uh, her version kind of mixed with mine. And I never make a small amount of banana pudding. No. Can't do it because if I make a small banana pudding, my family is going to have a fit. So I'm going to make a banana a banana pudding. Matter of fact, I probably make one big one and one small one, and I'm going to make the a banana pudding uh, that would feed a whole family. It would probably feed. 14 to 15 people. So I'm going to make that. And any of my recipes that seems a little bit much for your family, you can always cut the ingredients down. Okay. And another thing, if you don't have, I, I make my banana pudding with a double boiler. It's better for me because you have to really, really stick with your banana pudding if you're going to make it on the stove because it will scotch at the bottom. And trust me, scotch banana pudding do not taste good. So in order for me to not scotch the banana pudding and still stick with it, though, because you don't want lumps in it, um, I do a double boiler. I don't have one big enough for the banana pudding that I'm doing, so guess what I did? I have two pots. I have this pot and I have this pot. So what I do, I put about maybe two cups of water in this pot. And I put all of my ingredients in this pot. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and mix up the ingredients first because we're going to, um, we, it's a few steps to this banana pudding. So let's get started. Oh, sis, we forgot the milk. So what we're going to do, we're going to start this banana pudding off with a vitamin D milk, just regular whole milk and for the amount you can open that and for the amount that I'm going to make I always shake my milk up now and for the amount of pudding that I'm going to make I'm gonna make enough for two but cut this recipe in half okay I'm gonna use this I'm gonna use the whole thing So this is um, a half a gallon of milk, and I'm going to use a whole can of carnation milk. Now, like me, if you tend to make a little bit more uh, banana pudding, I flash myself. <laughs> then you uh, need, you can always put them in mason, put the, the leftover pudding in mason jars, and you can give those out to your family members who enjoy your banana pudding. And that's what I do when I make, when I, if I have some leftover, I would always put them in mason jars and I'll give it away. And the only thing they have to do, they can put it in their double boiler, or if they want to warm it up in the microwave, they can put a little 
little milk in there and just keep it stirred till it gets smooth. It tastes just like you just made it, okay? So we have our a half a gallon of milk in here. We have our a can of carnation milk. Now, this is, a lot of people just put their plain flour in there and they have to beat up the lumps and all that. I don't do that. I may, I always use a flour paste. So this is just flour. This is a cup and a half of flour with, um, that's it, a cup and a half of flour. And what I did, I took a fork and I beat it up until it was like really smooth. Huh? What about it? You tell them to pour water. Oh, yeah. I didn't tell them. Okay. Well, I put two, I put a cup and a half of flour and I put water until it got thick and pasty. Not too watery because you want your pudding to tighten up really well. Okay. So we're going to put this in there. Even when I'm making a peach cobbler, I kind of do my um, flour beforehand like this. I just like to go ahead and get the lumps out instead of putting it on the stove and then adding flour and have to worry about trying to get and strain lumps out. Okay. This is, we, I like a lot of vanilla in my banana pudding. So this is two teaspoons and a half of vanilla. Remember, pure vanilla flavor for the best results, y'all. A lot of vanilla. Okay, sugar. This is two cups of sugar. Two cups. And as you're putting cook, and you know, I always taste mine a little bit, but as you're putting cooked, if you want to take a teaspoon and kind of taste it, and if you want a little more sugar, go ahead and put you a little more sugar in there. Give us some salt. Okay. That's two cups and a half. No, two cups, I'm sorry. And I have six eggs separated. And you can separate your separate your eggs, and I always save the white for uh, egg whites if I want to make an egg sandwich or something. But we don't like um, meringue. But if you want to make meringue, you can save your egg whites. You can use a uh, one teaspoon of cream. One, I'm sorry, one little uh, a half a teaspoon, not quite that much of cream of tartar. And you can also use the uh, uh, a half a teaspoon of vanilla flavor, um, maybe two tablespoons of sugar, and put this in your put it in your blend your mixer, and you can whip it until it's light and fluffy, and you can make your meringue like that. It's just we we don't eat meringue, so you know they don't like it. They just want the pudding and the crackers. So what is that little? Uh, um, but I separated the eggs. I want to show them that. So we're going to put those eggs in there. We're going to get all of that. Okay. All of the eggs. And the way I found this little um, handy item, I think I won it. I went to some sort of um, uh, pamper chef party. Let me see that. So, mm -hmm. and I and I won this. But it's so so easy to do. You just put this on the side of your bowl. You crack your egg in there. You hold it up. Shake the the uh, excess off, which would be your egg white, and then you have your egg in here. So, you know, you have your yolk in here. But I love this. This is what I use when I make my banana puddings. I don't know whether you can order one of these or whatever, but it's been a while. Okay, give me that. Okay. I always use two pinches of salt. And you know what a pinch is. Okay. Now, I'm going to take and stir this. 
get it all mixed up in there. Okay. And what I do is I have sister put about that much, maybe about, about a cup or so of water. Okay. Because when you put this heavy pot inside of that heavy pot, the water tends to kind of flow out of it. So uh, I'm going to um, have her to go ahead and start the water and put the water, uh, get it on. And then what I'll do as it's cooking, as the milk and all that is getting warmed up, I go ahead and put one half stick of butter in there. And this is real butter and it's salted. I always use salted butter. So this, this is salted. And so this is what I'm going to put in here when the cooking process starts and it gets thick. I'll come back and I'll show you all the, the cooking process and I'll show you how it's supposed to look, you know, for you to take, um, so you can take it out and, and put your pudding. It's just a custard. Put it over your um, bananas and crackers. This is a whole bunch of bananas. And we're thinking about, doing, like I said, we're going to do two. You can break this recipe in half, but we got two bunches of bananas, and this is enough for the, the, the pans that we're going to make. And when we come back, you know, I'm going to let you see how this looks, and, and, you know, so you'll know when to take it off, when it gets thick enough. And we're going to uh, use, I bought this from a, um, a warehouse, and a uh, warehouse club, I guess you would call them, and I bought this from a warehouse club, and what uh, it's got two. It has two bags in here, so uh, this would make a big, a big banana pudding. You know, if you're gonna make a small one, most people just use one. But since we're gonna make a, a kind of large one and a small one, we decide to get this. So, and always get vanilla, vanilla wafers. I don't use any substitute because the other crack of wafers that I tried a while back, they don't hold up to the thickness and the, the warmness of the pudding. And these right here, they hold up by far, hands down. So we'll be back in a sec, okay? Okay, y'all. This is the finished product on the pudding. Excuse me, I'm trying to get adjusted here. I hope you can see this. But this is how the pudding looks. It's cooked down to a good consistency. And how you know that your pudding is thick enough, take a spoon, stick your spoon in there, and if your spoon come up with anything still on it or coated like that, that means that it's ready. See that? That spoon. So that means that it's ready. It cooked about maybe 35 to 40 minutes. I turned it off and we're going to get ready to get the um this pudding together okay this is going to be good y'all hey y'all we back we finished with our pudding this is the consistency you want thick no lumps and what's going to happen is that this is going to sit up and as it sit up and gets cold it's going to thicken more okay now this is just my little pot i use on my stove to dip out okay so this is what i use some people can use a ladle you can just pour it right out okay Oh, hold on for a minute, y'all. Wait one minute. I forgot the bananas.
I'm going too fast. Today it's been hot. It's hot. Okay. I put the cracker, the cookies in here. And you have to hurry up and work real fast with your bananas because the bananas are turned brown. And I hate to see brown bananas in a banana pudding. I just, I just hate that. There's no special way you have to um, arrange this. This is because this is for my family. So, I mean, if I wanted to do one and um, take it somewhere, you know, for somebody's dinner or going out to dinner, I would take my time and arrange it, but this is fine. More bananas. Do more bananas on now. Remember, I'm making two now. Get out of there. We like a lot of uh, cookies in ours, a lot of them, so just make sure you have plenty of, um, you know, cookies for your pudding because that's what we like more than the bananas, okay? Now we're going to take our pudding. We're going to spread the pudding over the bananas and crackers. Usually I have some left, but I'm not going to today because uh, well, I'm, I'm making two of them. Get that, and what I do, I kind of go in between the cookies and make sure that your um, pudding is getting all the way through, all the way through. Okay. Put a little more on this side. Like I say, if you want to do this fancy, you can, but this is going to be cool and we're going to eat this tonight. My grandson is here and he's waiting on it. He always tell me, said my banana pudding, it's like a, um, a, he's at a swimming pool and he's on the diving board and he's going to dive in there with a fork, with a spoon. That's the way he, <laughs> he described this banana pudding so he likes it. Okay, so it look like we have it all. Where is it? This right here. Oh. Look like we have it all in there. Now I told you that I don't use meringue, but you're welcome to do meringue. Let me see those cookies. You're welcome to do the meringue. Thank you. I uh, crunched up some cookies, and we're going to sprinkle the cookies on top of this banana pudding. Y'all, this is going to be delicious. I have to stay away from this banana pudding because it is so good, I would eat half of it. I really only make these around the holidays, but since we are in and not really going out, and I wanted to do have a treat for everybody, but I put heavy, heavy crumbs on this banana pudding. I'm gonna let it sit out about 10 minutes. Then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator 
and we're going to let it cool. And when we come back, we'll have some banana. And when we come back, y'all, we'll have some banana pudding with you, okay? Hey, y'all, we back with our banana pudding. And uh, it's been in the refrigerator for a few hours. And so we're ready to get ready to dig in. And I hope y'all enjoy the enjoy the recipe. But if you all need to reduce or either have a smaller um, a banana pudding, you know, you can do that by reducing your um, ingredients. And uh, if you need to inbox me, you can inbox me and I can help you with that. But I did enough to make two banana puddings, one this size, and I'll let you see and uh, one a little bit smaller out of the same type of uh, the glass pan uh, dish. And so we um, we made this banana pudding and I have gotten rave reviews, but always remember when you make your banana pudding, be sure you let it stay on the stove and get thickened for about 45, 45 minutes and just keep it stirred. Excuse me y'all. Um, so just you know just make sure you keep it stirred and you and then what I did with that butter I always like to add my butter when when everything is is smooth and and, and warm and that's when I add my uh, my butter in there so it can go ahead and kind of melt in there and as you stir it'll melt now I'm gonna tell you <coughs> to make real banana pudding y'all <coughs> Excuse me. To make real banana pudding, you you are going to have to stir. Uh, uh, because, I mean, we can do because I can do the Jello instant pudding, but why not have some of grandmother's banana pudding and and make it from scratch? And and the the proof is in the pudding. It is in the the custard. It's really a custard. So uh, if you want to make a good homemade banana pudding and if you want to make enough for, what, 14, 15 people, you know, you can go ahead and uh, uh, use the exact measurements that I did. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, you know, I told you I taste my uh, uh, pudding as I go. And so I did have to, have to add a half a cup of sugar in that. I don't want to add too much sugar and I want, don't want to add too less sugar, less of sugar. So... We're going to enjoy this. We're going to bring this down so you can see it. Uh -uh. Here it is. This is the banana pudding, and it is really, really heavy. Really rich, really heavy. This is the pudding. It's really thick. And you see, you don't have to cook it that long, y'all. You don't have to cook it that long, y'all. I'm sorry. To start getting a thick consistency. But when you start getting, getting it thick, Make sure you take it off. Don't cook it until it's just too thick and you can't spread it over your, your bananas and your cookies. You want it a nice consistency because what it'll do, time you take it out and pour it over the cookie and it starts to, over the bananas and cookies is gonna start to thicken. So uh, that's the reason it's important that you use the, the, uh, the amount of flour that I told you to use and just go ahead and, and, and put a little water in your flour and get it thick into a paste. And that, that's going to help your pudding to be able to get thicker. You know, I don't like thin, uh, thin um, uh, pudding on my banana pudding. I like it thick. So we finna taste it, y'all. 
My grandson is going to have a ball with this, I tell you. Go away. I'm talking to somebody, I'm not talking to myself now. This is the old fashioned banana pudding that my mother used to make. Rich and Queen. Mm -hmm. And she didn't use the meringue either. She didn't use meringue. So I don't really care for it. But if you want to do the meringue, remember, get you some cream of tata, uh, some sugar and vanilla flavor. And you go ahead and uh, make your meringue, spread it on top, put it in the oven, up under the broiler if you want for a few seconds and then you'll have a nice meringue but it's just that we we don't like meringue you know we'll we'll peel it off and throw it away okay so this is how we like our banana pudding we cook dinner we won't be hungry eating this sweet mm -hmm. What you standing around for? Talking to a little piss. <laughs> you mean the face of I'm telling you, this is the reason I only make this for Thanksgiving and yes. Christmas. <laughs> My waistline couldn't take it. Mm. Mm. It's not too sweet. Mm. It's just right. Just right. That's good. Anybody who have had my banana pudding, they always say that. It's delicious. Y'all, we enjoyed doing this video. We'll be coming back again with more videos with the things that my family like. I'm going to do some macaroni and cheese my way. And um, just uh, uh, be good. Take care of yourself. And do us a favor. Be good to yourself. And if you be good to yourself, you don't have any choice but to be good to others. Take care of yourself. Take care of the people around you. Take care of the, the, the people in your family that's over 60, 65. Yes. Maybe somebody with a pre-existing uh, condition. Take care of them. And, you know, uh, do them a favor. Don't go visit unless they really want to need something. You know, just leave whatever you got to give them at the door because there's a lot of people with underlying diseases that's really getting sick. So, don't nobody come visit me, period. I don't play that. No. <laughs> so, thank y'all. We love y'all. Yeah. See you later.